Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Vertical Location, the next frontier in location-based gaming. Uh, today's session is going to be jam-packed with some great insights and information on some exciting new capabilities, so uh, we're eager to get right into it. Let me just give you a quick agenda for today's session. Uh, we're going to start off with a quick overview of Vertical Location and why it's interesting to game developers and some of the basics uh, about how it works. Then we're going to hear from Leandro Gonzalez, who will talk about his experience using Vertical Location as a game developer. And then finally, Deepak Joseph from NextNav will join us for a discussion about the specifics of how Vertical and a vertical location can be integrated into games. And then finally, we'll do a Q&A where we'll answer any uh, questions you might have. Of course, you can always chime in uh, on the chat uh, and add any questions you might have. In the meantime, we'll be happy to answer those. Uh, before we dive in, just a, a couple quick uh, logistical notes. Uh, we're going to make the recording of this session available on our website once we're done, and we're going to send it around to email by email uh, to all participants as well. And for those, uh, that Q&A section, we'll have the chat open throughout the session, so feel free to, uh, to ask any questions as you go along, and we'll be happy to answer those. Okay, so without any further ado, I just wanted to uh, start by just introducing the concept of vertical location, because uh, it's, it's pretty new. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of this thing, that, a lot of this uh, solution that hasn't really been talked about in the market yet because it's a brand new thing that people have been trying to solve for many years. So, you know, why is vertical location important? Um, you know, right up until this point, we've, uh, we've been living in a 2D world. Uh, every uh, mapping application that you look at on your phone, every uh, mobile application that you use for gaming on your phone or anywhere else, it, uh, it's a 2D world out there. It shows a flat surface. And that limits the market for gaming. If you think about, you know, Pokemon Go is, of course, the, the best example. Um, it's it, 2D location really limits the, uh, the ability for gamers to play games like Pokemon Go uh, anywhere but outdoor locations and public spaces. If you're in an indoor location, a building, underground, in a subway station, you're not going to be able to play that game or it's going to show you on top of a bunch of other people because it, it conflates all of those things into a flat map. So that, may, that means that only those outdoor locations and public spaces are available for, for gaming, which is in cities, especially large, dense cities, uh, that's an extreme uh, limitation on the market. The second is uh, vertical location unlocks new dimensions of gameplay. That means that when you're in a building, you can play in the stairwell, you can play on multiple floors, you can have different experiences going from floor to floor. There are a lot of different ways that you can use vertical location in the game, and we haven't even explored that. We haven't even begun to explore the possibilities there in terms of you know, creative license. Uh, and then finally, vertical location can drive revenue uh, for gaming, both through a differentiated user experience. You know, there are thousands of games that are released every year, um, and many of those are location-based games, but all of them have that same user experience. Right now, if you're able to add vertical location to a game, that's going to differentiate you in the marketplace. It's going to be a brand new thing. And you know, a lot of gamers are always looking for that brand new thing. Uh, it also enables highly targeted advertising in games uh, and allows you to associate you know, visiting a certain place, especially within a building, uh, with, um, you know, with advertising revenue, which is actually going to prove the value of your game to advertisers. So, there's some additional uh, revenue value there. So I just wanted to provide a, a quick idea of how this looks, how it feels actually in a game. Uh, so the problem is, you know, can we find a Pikachu in the Salesforce Tower, you know, the iconic now uh, tower in downtown San Francisco? You know, Wanda's there, she wants to find a Pikachu, where can she find it? Well, right now, if you look at, um, at the maps that are there, it's just going to show a 2D map. Maybe it's going to show, you know, a, a 3D looking picture of the uh, of the tower itself. But in terms of where you can find it, that you know, all of the stories on that Salesforce tower are going to be scrunched down into one. Um, so you're only going to be able to really find that Pikachu probably on the on this um, the sidewalk outside of the Salesforce tower, but nowhere within the 
tower itself. Or if you do find it in the tower, it's not going to be able to differentiate where whether that Pikachu is on the top floor or on the bottom floor. But with vertical location, uh, the solution that NextNav provides, you're actually able to, uh, to actually pinpoint where that Pikachu is on a distinct floor within that structure. So uh, you can say, you know, differentiate between you know, a Starbucks on the ground floor, a Salesforce office on the 15th floor, or the viewing deck up on the 30th floor, and you can find you know, different Pokemon in different, uh, different floors there. So just think about the opportunities that that provides for gaming, um, that, and that it provides for all of the ecosystem that surrounds gaming as well. And that actually uh, turns it into a pretty exciting opportunity uh, for gamers, game developers, and actual game players as well. So how does this whole system work? We've been talking about vertical location and all the benefits, but what about the solution itself? Um, so this is what NextNav provides. There are basically three elements of it. Uh, the first is every phone has, or most smartphones today, have a barometer in them. Uh, and you can see there the sort of general place. Uh, what, that's one of the reasons why your cell phone has a little grate down there at the bottom. It's to let the air in for the barometer um, so basically, we take that barometer reading and transform it into uh, a, an altitude measurement, a height measurement. And the way we do that is by comparing that information from your phone with information that we gather from uh, local stations, altitude stations that we've set up around the country uh, in urban markets. And then we process all of that data in the cloud and then return uh, information back to the phone um, that will tell you a very accurate location to within about three meters, 94% uh, of the time, which is extremely good. It's way better than anything else uh, that's out there on the market today. So that's just a general overview of how we sort of create that altitude measurement. And in terms of where that altitude measurement is available, uh, we're rolling this solution out in 105 major US markets uh, by April next year. Most of these are actually live today. Uh, there are just a couple of the larger markets that we're working to bring online, uh, but we're, we're well on the way to, to doing that. We are even ahead of schedule a little bit on where we are. And a lot of the major markets that you see here are also uh, already online, ready to go even as we speak. So now I just wanna transition uh, to our conversation with uh, Leandro Gonzalez, who's uh, a wonderful game developer about you know, talk to him about how vertical location is going to change gaming. So just to introduce uh, Leandro real quick, he is the co-founder, CEO, CTO, head of studio uh, at Trick Gaming. Any anything else that I missed there, Leandro? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's about it. Thanks, Ben. Happy yeah. to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having me here at the, at the webinar. Yeah. So Leandro's been deeply involved in the gaming industry for over a decade now in a variety of leadership and technical roles. And for those of you who are taking part in the Global Game Jam next month, he's been a, a long time uh, participant in the Global Game Jam as well. And the great thing about Leandro is that he's got both a sort of high level view of the industry, uh, but also an on the ground perspective of someone who actually develops games you know, every day. So I just want to start off, Leandro, by asking you, you know, what do you think is the state of location-based gaming today? How far are we uh, along on that evolutionary path? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. those are great questions, man. So uh, it's in very good shape. Actually, the location-based gaming industry today is in great shape. Um, you know, in the last five years, it has multiplied by about 10 times in revenue. So in 2015, it was about 200 million. Now in 2020, it's going to be about 1.9 billion. Right, so, um, and if we project that by 2025, it's uh, expected to be about 8 billion, so four times what it is now. Um, and guess, you know, where half uh, of the, well, half of that 1.9 billion we have today is coming from hardware, half is coming from the software, and guess, you know, where the, <laughs> where most of the software revenue is coming from, right? Yeah, I was going to say there's a, there's sort of an elephant in the room there, and it's one particular game, one that I actually mentioned before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's that one. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, well, okay. Uh, for those who are still wondering, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
500 million come from from just Pokemon Go. So what that tells us is that well, it's growing, it's growing like like race is here to stay. You know that's that's very important. And also the market is not saturated um, so far. So you know this one game has so much. There's um, people are ready to jump into new experiences, right? The the, the players are start for this kind of content. So I think you know that makes the industry be in great shape. The next couple of years, we're going to see a lot of these games, uh, you know, new games, new experiences, and especially the biggest brands. You know, we saw it also this year. I think there was a One Piece game that is also doing great, about 200 million uh, in, in 2020. So, you know, that's, that's the state of the industry. You ask also the evolutionary path. I think this is important to keep in mind because, you know, with other technologies, for example, AR and VR, we know big things are about to happen, but the technology still feels a little bit immature, but with location base is different, right? The technology is already mature, it's here, you know, a game that gets published today, it starts making money right away. So I think that's uh, very important for, you know, um, developers to keep in mind when they want to start, you know, investing the resources into developing uh, this kind of experience. Yeah, absolutely. All right, those are some, those are some good insights. Thanks for that. Uh, second, you know, you started to work with vertical location already. How was your imagination sparked by using this new tool? What, what sort of, what did it, uh, what did it do for you? What did you start to think about when you started using it? Yeah, yeah, another great question. Well, you know, it's been a process because the first thing is that when you start thinking about location-based games, uh, we're all used to just, you know, thinking 2D. So I had to you know, break a little bit that, that mold, start thinking in, in 3D, you know, challenge my right. my own brain. Uh, and there was a little, um, you know, a little break of paradigm there until um, I started really thinking about ideas that really used um, vertical location. I think um, it's really important, you know, to go out there. At least this is in my own experience. You go out there and you start seeing, you know, um, what people do in, you know, um, for example, at a park, what, what people do when they go up and down in buildings, just uh, in regular life. And once you have this seed planted in your mind that, you know, this exists, at some point, you know, just it sparks like that. An idea, you know, comes to mind fully formed or a, a connection between something that you see, I don't know, you see someone playing, you know, catch in the park and you think, okay, how about I don't know, a game where we are trying to track um, how high the best of three you can throw a ball, right? This, these weird ideas that you didn't have before start coming to mind. And what you can do as a game designer here is these are actual game mechanics, right? That we have never implemented yet because we didn't have the technology. I see this as kind of the same transition that happened when we went from 2D games to 3D games, you know, in in consoles, well, now we're going from 2D space to 3D space. So there has to be a change of paradigm. And, and um, I don't know, I, I find it fascinating. This is really interesting. Yeah. And just to think that you're going to have to start thinking of buildings as opportunities rather than barriers uh, in a location based game, that's probably a, a big change of mindset as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, uh, of course, you know, it's an opportunity. It's very experimental. But uh, as you know, as a game developer, you know, when you are a, an indie developer, you cannot compete maybe with uh, bigger budgets in terms of your production quality or the amount of content. So you have to think about new ideas. And this is definitely a, a blue ocean, right? How we, we call it, yeah. those kind of ideas. Yeah. So as a developer, how easy is it to integrate vertical location into a game? Like once you have the tool, how, how easy is it to actually use? Well, the good news is that with the Unity plugin, it only takes a couple of days. You know, it's more, the integration is basically installing the, the Unity package. That's really fast. But then you yeah. have to understand a little bit the paradigm, you know, how, how that's calibration and that works. So I would say in, you know, in two days, you're up and running. Okay. That's pretty fast, actually. Again, if you're trying to think of a whole new paradigm, a whole new way of thinking about gaming, that's uh, that's pretty easy to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, finally, what, what advice would you have for game developers who are just getting started out with vertical location? Again, you sort of 
you have to start by wrapping your mind around it. Uh, but once you've done that, then uh, what would you say for people who are just getting started with the Unity plugin and, uh, and the solution? Yeah, well, I, I can talk, um, you know, about my own experience with this, but really the moment, you know, when I had that, that uh, kind of aha moment was when I saw it working finally, when I right. you know, saw the, um, myself on the map and I saw that I was going up or down stairs or, you know, I, I live in Santa Monica, so there's no many stairs here, but, you know, you are going up and down <laughs> the hills and you see yourself, uh, you know, compared to the sea level and uh, at that moment is when it really clicked for me. So what I would say is um, don't waste time thinking about, okay, what's the great idea that I'm going to to make that is going to change the, the world before I start, uh, you know, I start trying something, and start coding. Just download the plugin, get it to run on your phone with the, the test, the demo scene that we provide, and, you know, go play around and, and see how it works. So after you do that, that's when the ideas start uh, to pop up for real. So I would say, you know, to developers do that. that that's really good advice. I mean, I think uh, having seen it on my phone as well, uh, you really don't get this, a sense of what it can do until you actually see it working. But then once you start playing around with it going upstairs and into buildings, then you can see that it's actually very accurate, very responsive, and just very impressive overall. So I like your idea of yeah. getting in there and actually starting to use it, and then the game ideas will naturally come. I can already see that that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, great. Well, thanks very much. Um, I'm just going to move on now to our next section, which is how to integrate vertical location into gaming apps. So now we're just going to go a little bit into to more detail there. Um, and for that, I'm going to introduce Deepak Joseph, who's our VP of product here at NextNav. Uh, Deepak leads our product team and has been hard at work at pulling together all of the technological elements of vertical location. Uh, he's gonna give us a deeper dive into how developers in the public safety space can integrate vertical location, uh, in, or not in the public safety space, in the gaming space, can uh, integrate vertical location into their applications and services. So Deepak, Take it away. All right, great. Thanks, Ben, and thanks everyone for attending our webinar and for uh, Leo and his insights here. Uh, and as uh, Ben had, had teed up the conversation earlier, um, uh, what we have, of course, is uh, that the core of NextNav's technology is our ability to deliver uh, high precision, high quality, altitude data. And the way uh, we characterize it is in absolute terms. It's not necessarily in relative terms. Uh, and of course, as Bennett mentioned, uh, the way we do our altitude service uh, is using a, a pressure-based system. And for that, we, of course, have a, um, a industry-leading performance-based um, network that we've deployed to deliver this high-accuracy altitude information. And so the way we deliver this altitude uh, data uh, for um, uh, any really endpoint and how we, let's say, anyone can access our service is through a couple of these different options. Uh, we do have uh, today um, native SDK, so we have an Android uh, SDK and an iOS SDK. So these are, if you were to develop a native application on those platforms, you could use that. And uh, as Leo was alluding to earlier, especially on the on the gaming side, at the moment we have a Unity plugin uh, that actually instantiates those very uh, native uh, Android and iOS SDKs. Uh, but this uh, obviously Unity plugin makes it. Uh, uh, easy for any Unity-based, uh, you know, game developer uh, to integrate this altitude uh, feature um, within their uh, application or, or the game scene. And this can obviously, as we spoke about, enable a range of games, uh, pure 3D uh, games, uh, AR, VR, different kinds of scenarios that we haven't even imagined. And of course, we're uh, excited to bring it to you guys in the marketplace. So you can, of course, uh, think of ideas that we haven't even imagined yet. Um, in addition to that, uh, and of course, even within the uh, platforms, uh, obviously Unity is the major platform. There is Unreal and there's a few others. So over the course of the year, we would be, uh, let's say, releasing plugins for those platforms as well. So we are enabling as many platforms as possible to take advantage of our uh, location service or, or the vertical location service here. In addition, we are uh, looking at uh, further down, uh, like an API-based service, and these are for uh, platforms that are beyond, uh, let's say, the native mobile platforms or even game platforms, and these could be IoT or other kinds of either web or uh, different kinds of platforms. So our goal here really, uh, and of course, we solicit your input as well as users of the service or potential users of the service, 
uh, is to really make uh, the um, integration of vertical location as simple as possible and in as many platforms, right? So, so that's kind of our goal uh, to, to enable this uh, going forward. Uh, so maybe Ben, you could go to the next slide. All right, uh, so then as um, Ben and Leo were kind of alluding to earlier, our whole uh, goal here is to kind of uh, make it as simple as possible to uh, uh, include altitude in, in any application, because we recognize that as, as app developers, you have many, many things to consider, uh, especially on the game side, of course, the, the content, the game uh, scene, the gameplay, uh, there, there's a range of things. Uh, and we recognize that altitude is uh, a key, but really one of, you know, a multitude of features. So our goal here as we think about, uh, you know, offering the service and the product that we put together uh, and the interfaces and how to integrate, uh, we really try to keep uh, developers in mind to make it as simple as possible. And how, as Leo was mentioning a little while ago, uh, you know, we, we our real goal is for, for app developers to really integrate this within a day or so, right? If you, you really want, uh, have a capability where you drop in the plugin and you're essentially ready to go so that you can focus all your energies on actually thinking about how the altitude data can actually help enhance the game that, that you're uh, building. Uh, at the core of it, the SDK or the, the plugin here, what it really uh, generates is altitude data currently in, in two formats. Uh, one of this is what we call as height above the soil, and we'll kind of get into the details. And the other is the height above terrain. So these are in meters. Uh, and so the height of terrain is the meters above uh, the terrain in which the, the device is located or where the user is located. And in general, uh, an average floor separation in, in the US is, is roughly three meters. Uh, so, you know, if you're kind of anywhere between the uh, between one to three meters, you're typically kind of on the first floor. Uh, if you're, you know, three plus, you're on the second floor. In general, people are holding their devices in their hands. So there are uh, you know, roughly anywhere between five to six feet. So they're kind of a, a meter or a meter and a half above terrain, so to speak. Uh, so, so that would be kind of a way to, uh, and of course, th this is the output of the SDK and, and we fully expect the uh, app developers such as yourselves to take this uh, information and then of course add it to the, the, the gameplay or the scene that you're going to be uh, conceiving here. Uh, and of course, the way the uh, SDK or the plugin here generates the um, uh, altitude data is that it computes the altitude data, data locally uh, within the SDK that is inside the plugin. Uh, but the way it does that, it, it certainly uses the 2D location from the device because obviously the height is relative to the 2D position in, in which the device is located uh, and also uses the phone's uh, pressure data. So you do require a pressure sensor to be uh, available on a particular device in order for the solution to work. Uh, but it combines this with assistance information that we deliver from our network to generate this uh, you know, accurate altitude that, that could be provided uh, for, for the host app. Uh, and then of course, as we said, it's available at the moment for certainly both the Android and iOS platforms. Um, maybe then we could go into another level of detail. Um, so, and keeping the theme of making it really uh, simple for uh, users or developers to integrate our uh, plugin into, the, uh, into your applications, uh, what we do is uh, the plugin takes care of pretty much all of the aspects of generating altitude for your application. So essentially you drop in the plugin, you tell the plugin, I want altitude at a certain rate. It could be one time, it could be one every second. Of course, you can call it in a loop, if you will, if you wanted a different rate uh, at which you wanted the altitude to be generated. And once you do that call, uh, the SDK underneath it takes care of getting the 2D location, it takes care of getting the pressure from the device and also going to our uh, cloud service to download the assistance and to do the computation to generate the altitude of the data. And of course, uh, there's an associated uh, quality metric that goes with it that we'll get into some more detail. But the concept here is we have tried to make it uh, as really as seamlessly or as simple as possible where uh, we essentially call it the delegated mode. So you're delegating the plugin to give you altitude from a app or a unity uh, or, or a game uh, app post app perspective and uh, the uh, plugin takes care of everything else um, and of course the as we uh, alluded to before uh, the accuracy here is really largely driven by how the sensor on the phone does uh, in, in addition to the high quality network that we have uh, the data that we collect within the sdk is also used to perform what we call as in band calibration during normal operation uh, to, to deliver kind of the accuracy that you would need typically kind of the floor level accuracy for your applications. But there may be some use cases where you may want even 
better accuracy or better accuracy under many, many scenarios. So the SDK also enables uh, this option of uh, uh, soliciting the user's input to us uh, to help in uh, calibrating the battle such that the performance can be in line depending on kind of the game that you use. I mean, this is a feature that's available in the SDK. We expect uh, you know some developers to use it because of their use cases. Others uh, would find that the in-band calibration is, is good enough and you would not need to call this uh, user-assisted mode. So that's something that, uh, again, to Leo's point, once you start playing with the Unity uh, plugin and you uh, think about what how you want to use it and the game that you want to use it for, that will drive some of those uh, decisions here. Um, maybe we could do the next one. So in addition to that uh, feature of the core generating the altitude data in this kind of delegated automated mode, uh, assuring high performance using uh, kind of either in-band or uh, user-assisted uh, uh, calibration, the, uh, the SDK also has a feature where uh, we have uh, the ability to, let's say, visualize the altitude data uh, for developers that want to, let's say, further delegate that feature to the SDK. Uh, and, and our initial version of this is what we call as the altimeter feature. It's really a sidebar that, that you can see here in the images here, uh, the, the gray sidebar that actually um, can be overlaid really on any uh, uh, UI, uh, background UI. So it's, it's an overlay function that the SDK can draw. Uh, and within that uh, sidebar, uh, you can, of course, uh, pass in um icons uh, as well as alternate information and then you can see the kind of the stack up of multiple uh, users especially if you have a game or an application scenario where uh, there is data flowing between that there's uh, location sharing happening uh, between multiple users within that game scene for instance uh, this altimeter will allow you to do kind of this uh, stack up of each user uh, relative to their terrain position kind of where, where they're at so uh, the of course the host app uh, needs to pass in the uh, marker and the height information that comes out of the local SDK as well as any remote devices that you may be connecting with your backend, uh, you know, messaging uh, or, or data transfer system. But the visualization in terms of actually drawing this on a uh, scale, auto sizing it, kind of going into this uh, full screen view and coming back, those uh, are some of the initial features that uh, we've implemented in the SDK. And uh, for those of you that are that are developers that are more interested in this, we have a more extensive altitude visualization guide that we're also happy to provide and support as part of the developer package that goes into more of the capabilities that we're on a trajectory of making future releases of our SDKs that that will support some of those more sophisticated features. But this is our attempt to uh, offer maybe uh, you uh, developers a almost a running start or an, at least an initial stake in the ground in terms of concepts of how to uh, visually render the altitude data in kind of this two and a half D mode where you have a 2D plane. And of course here we're on the 2D side, visually thinking of it in terms of a map, uh, but then uh, you're able to kind of also convey the meaning of uh, the relative heights of those markers that is on uh, a 2D map. Uh, so again, this is a, a feature of the SDK and the plugin. It's something that you don't have to necessarily use it, but it's available to, to take advantage of, again, coming from our uh, approach of making uh, uh, altitude as accessible and as easy as possible to, to, to use from, from, the, from that perspective. Um, this is a really important point, and Leandro, this goes to what you were saying before about just trying to wrap your head around how to start operating in 3D, uh, how to actually start, you know, using that movement. Um, so I think, you know, having this is, uh, is a big part of what we were talking about before. Yeah. Uh, so then just a little bit more tactical on the tactical side in terms of how do you, uh, you know, get hold of the plugin and how do you use it? Uh, some details, obviously, as we said, it's available for, uh, you know, Android and iOS. Uh, the, the plugin size is not very, very big at all. Um, and of course, when we give you the package in addition to the uh, plugin, uh, we would uh, give you a key. So you do require a developer key to, to uh, transfer into the uh, plugin and uh, provide that information. Uh, we also provide you documentation in terms of how to do it. Of course, we uh, are happy to support you as you go through this integration uh, journey. In addition to that, uh, we also have a test application that you can actually touch and feel and see how this uh, you know, SDK is integrated. So even before you start the, the full integration effect, you'll be able to see how uh, a sample of how uh, such an implementation could, could, could work using the Unity plugin. Um, and certainly, I think uh, uh, as uh, we'll send you a follow-up information following this webinar, where you could use to uh, uh, request access for both the the plugin 
the, the developer package, which is uh, the, the, the software files, the developer guide, the sample app. Uh, so we, if you, we watch out for this um, uh, form uh, so, so you can fill out and, and we'd be certainly happy to share and, and support you through the integration journey. Okay, we'll uh, look for that email soon after this webinar. We'll send you the recording of the webinar and we'll also send you details on how to get a, a developer key and how to get access to the, to the plugin itself. Okay, and I believe that uh, sends us right into the Q&A part. Um, so let me just start by asking both uh, Deepak and Leandro, you know, knowing what you know now about the, the Unity plugin and, and how it goes, how it actually works, uh, Deepak, what sort of uh, advice would you give to developers who are just starting off with vertical locations? Same question as I asked uh, Leandro. Uh, I, I think, uh, and also maybe my answer is probably going to hew pretty closely kind of to what Leo was mentioning in the sense that, at least from our perspective, and certainly we are obviously very open to feedback from the developer community in terms of how we can make the SDK and the plugin more easy to integrate, but, but our driving uh, philosophy here is to make it as simple as possible to, uh, and as straightforward as possible to integrate. The SDK, and of course, as we've heard from Leo, it, it's really a days or, or, or already and a half type work to integrate the SDK, but bulk of the work really is uh, obviously on the developers and your game scene and your thoughts around how you would take this information and uh, both display it within your application, how you would use it. Um, so our, our, I would say from a integration standpoint, we think we have done uh, a, a lot of work to make it uh, pretty easy and straightforward to integrate it and of course if there's anything more we could do to, to support that integration we're happy to hear from the community and make uh, changes and improvements to the uh, SDK and the plugin but but, but I'd say uh, really the, the the bulk of both the creative work as, as well as the the mechanics of taking the information out of the SDK the, the vertical location information out of the SDK and the plugin and using it within the game is where obviously uh, bulk of the work and the effort has been made. Feel free to chime in with any other questions you might have. Just uh, drop that into the question section. Um, but in the meantime, I'll, I'll ask Leandro, you know, I think one of the things that always strikes people when they start to use this is how responsive it is, how quickly you can get uh, feedback. How do you think that's going to change how gameplay actually works? If you look at the, the 2D location right now, it actually takes it a while for a GPS to figure out, you know, where you're going. Uh, but this is much more responsive. How do you see that uh, actually working out in, in gameplay itself? Yeah, well, that's, that's a great question. So let me think for a second. The thing that comes to mind here is that the accuracy that we have now, it's, it feels natural, right? You see that it's like, ah, I get it. This is how it should feel, right? And I think what's going to happen is that we're going to start seeing this, you know, in games apps in everything down the road you know it's, it's going to i don't know maybe you know pokemon go will implement it maybe uber will implement something like this and then everyone else will have to you know every competitor everyone will have to by definition do it too you know to be up to speed and i think in five ten years from now we're going to forget about those times where we were using only 2d maps you know when <laughs> you were going to find, okay, which floor of LAX is my Uber supposed to be? Um, so I think, you know, if it's so organic and so so natural that once you start using it, you forget that that's something else, you know, uh, this is the way it should be. Um, so it, I'm really excited for people to start testing it and, and see the same that I saw, you know, because when you talk about it theoretically, uh, you can have an idea, but when you really try it, that's when it becomes uh, awesome. Deepak, any uh, uh, other questions or thoughts from you? Uh, yeah, I think just uh, echoing uh, Leo's uh, uh, comments here, uh, really what we are viewing this as, as really a journey with, with the uh, developer community, whereas you're integrating um, uh, altitude uh, information, uh, we, we certainly obviously are, are working to provide the most accurate altitude location information available, but, but we certainly want to work with uh, the, the developer community here to, to enable that and as Leo was saying well into the future this would become 
almost like uh, the, 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 the baseline of how information is rendered, but, but obviously between now and there, uh, there's certainly a journey to be had in terms of both getting the location data, uh, but also kind of representing it. So we, we we're certainly very excited to work with the community here and uh, both offer our solution, but also to uh, aid and support the, the integration efforts. Okay. I think that's a that's a great way to end it. That we're really looking to you know start a conversation with the developer community and the gaming community in particular uh, about how this can work, how this can expand opportunities, and how this can provide for some really uh, great gameplay out there. So we're really looking forward to seeing all these new games that are going to be developed both as part of the the game jam and just uh, out there in the world so uh leandro deepak thank you so much for joining us and i think we'll uh close off the webinar now so uh everybody look forward to uh, that follow-up email where you'll be able to both see the recording uh of what we've talked about today but also uh, to get access to uh, the unity plugin and the developer key as well so thank you very much for all of your help everybody Thanks, everyone.